let's look at the code that we have implemented from the trigger into our handler class. This is how our handler class looks like. Now, in order for us to see a couple of errors, let's go ahead and take a new requirement. And the requirement goes like this. Let's say whenever a electrical type case is created, that means when the case type is electrical, we are setting the priority field to high. But this time what I wanted to do, I want to add a prefix called high in the subject whenever there is a electrical type case that is created. So the requirement goes like this. In short, whenever there is an electrical type case that has been created, I want to update the subject with high as a starting value followed by the subject of the case. If you wonder why we are doing it, we want to catch the attention of the agents who are working on that case. That is why we are doing this approach. Whenever a case type is created, set the subject with prefix as high. So now if you see here, I'm talking about whenever a case has been created, I want to update the, or I want to set the subject with a prefix called high. By this, what we can do, we can basically come to a conclusion saying that I need to make a change on a field on a record that is going through the save process of insert. And since I'm making a change on a record that is going through save process, I can clearly say that I can put this in before insert. So that is how you would basically break down your requirement and understand where do you need to put that code in. Since that point is clear, let's understand where to write our code. Since I know that the trigger would be always called in the before insert that we have already seen, this is the method that it would be calling it. And I know that my method is here. So I can go ahead and write the logic in this place. Can I directly write it as a best practice? The answer is no. Can I write technically? The answer is yes. Instead of writing the code directly into my before insert method, what I'll do, I'll create another one more method and then call that method here. So that way I can make use of my reusability concept. Let's go ahead and create a method now. And then we'll see how exactly we can use that in our before insert. So I'll go ahead and create one more method here, public void. What we are trying to do, we are trying to set the subject electrical case. So I know that we'll be processing a single record just like how we have done it for the previous methods. So I'll take a temporary variable called case. This value would be passed on from the before insert method that I have created earlier. And I'll be calling this method from there. So since I have that understanding, I can go ahead and write the logic here. So what I'll do, I would be asking the system, give me the case type and check if that case type is electrical or not. So this is the check that I'll add. You might be wondering, can we not do it here? We can do it, but if you see here, there's an additional check that we are doing in, in terms of checking the case type. So that is why I want to make sure that my methods are independent and they can be reused again. So that is why I'm creating a new method. If you have an option, you can split this logic and you can apply the condition that I'm adding here and you can do the both the actions in one method itself. So we have written temporary case dot type is electrical or not. So that is what the question we have asked. In addition to that, so what I wanted to do, I wanted to check if somebody is adding the subject as high at the starting or not. All right. So for that reason, what I wanted to do, so I wanted to validate if the subject has high as a highlighter at the starting of the subject or not. All right. So what I will be doing, I'll be making use of substring, which is a method that we have in our string class, which would help me get the substring of the subject. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to get the subject of the case and we are doing a substring of it. In case if you do not know how exactly this substring would work, this is a simple example for it. So I've taken a string called S and I've added high test, right? So this is the value that I wanted to check in line number 117. What I'm doing, I'm asking the system to give me a substring of this variable called S. What is the substring that I'm asking? The system is basically checking this one. When I ask, s dot substring it would go to this string that is called s it would go and check this variable called s 
and what we have in it we have high test so it would basically start from index 0 which is this and it would count four characters from there so four characters from here would be this entire high value i'm asking the system to get me the subset of this string which would give me high if i execute these three lines line number 117 should give me value as high whereas line number 118 would be a check that i wanted to do which is nothing but the substring that i have printed on line number 117 which is giving me high i'm checking with one more method that we have in the string class which is equals ignore case in short i'm asking whether the value that is there at the starting four characters is matching with the text that i am intended to check which is value high if both are same this will give me true else it would give me false right so let's quickly execute this piece of code and then we'll go back to our original logic i'll select this three lines of code and i'll click on execute highlighted so i have got my debug log here i'll just check for debugs only and if you see here my line number 1 is high test which is a test string that i have taken and on line number 117 which is printed as 2 because this is line number 1 according to the number of lines that i have executed this is line number 2 line number 3 on line number 2 we have the value as test that i have printed in addition to that substring value is given as high so this is the test and this value is coming as high which is expected now what i'm asking on line number 3 i'm asking the system whether this value that i have is equals to this value that i'm checking so we know that this value is given as high is high equals high the answer is true if you look closely i have written ignore case what does this ignore case would do even though if there is a mismatch in the case sensitivity the system would ignore that and it would just check for the characters if they are matching it would return true if they are not matching it would return false right so that is the advantage of using your substring and your equals ignore case since that point is clear now we can go ahead and write our logic here so what i wanted to check whether the subject has high value that i was checking in my developer console so i'll go ahead and write the check that i wanted to do right so i've just copy pasted the same code just that instead of s we have written it as temp dot subject so that is what we have written here right so this is how you would write the syntax for it so if you see here we have written this check what it would do if there is a high value which is matching with the first four characters of this case subject it would give me true what do i need to do if that is not the case if the case subject doesn't have high value in its subject at the starting four characters that is where i need to update the subject or that is where i need to set the subject saying that i need to append high at the starting of the subject and then rest of the subject that is already there in the case so since i want the negative logic of it so that is why i'll put a not here why am i putting not if this is true that is where i do not want to do anything but instead if that is not the case that is where i wanted to set the subject differently from what is already been set by the customer right so that is what i am doing here so once the logic is done what we need to do we need to get the so this is my case subject field for that case subject field what am i doing i am putting value high and a hyphen just for an identification and then the normal subject that we have so let's say the subject of the case is like this fix my laptop is the case subject right so whenever the case subject comes in what we wanted to do we want to append high and the rest all value that we have so whenever the case comes in we are checking for the first four characters here the first four characters are not high so that is why this logic would be till this point it would be false not of false would be true and this part is also true if i'm setting the case type as electrical then what we are doing we are taking this subject adding high to it and appending the rest here so my updated subject would look like high hyphen right we would have the same subject that the user has saved the case with 
So that is what we have done here. So we have our method ready. So let's go ahead and use it in our before insert. I know that my before insert is here. What I'll do, I'll quickly go ahead and paste that method and pass the variable of the case, right? So since I'm iterating over the list of cases, which is nothing but my trigger.new, I'm passing this key variable called C to this method. So that way it would be executing each and every case that is going through the save process that go of insert, all right? So I've saved my logic, let's test this out. So when my logic would be running, it would be running when I set the case type as electrical. Let's put that as electrical. And what I will do for testing purpose, I'll say, I'll go with the same example that we have done, fix my laptop. So this is my subject. I'll go ahead and click on save. So it is giving me an error saying that populate all required fields. I'll go ahead and do it and click on save this time. So if everything goes fine, my subject needs to be updated with hi iPhone, the subject that of user entered. So if you see this logic is coming from the trigger that we have written in the before insert, we are appending this hi to the existing subject that we have. So this would get the attention of the agents who will be receiving these cases, right? This is good. Now we have started our discussion saying that there are a couple of common errors that we are focusing on but we ended up building a new requirement, right? So let's understand what was the error here. So why we had to introduce this new requirement for our common error scenario. So let's go ahead and create one more case, populate all required fields, set the case type as electrical so that my code would run, but this time I'm keeping my subject as blank. There is nothing that I'm entering here. I'll go ahead and click on save here. Let's see what would happen. As soon as I click on save, we have been presented with an error saying that system.null exception attempt to dereference a null object. So this is a common error that you would see in case if you have not put proper null checks. So let's understand what is happening here. So if you see this error, it says system.null exception. That means there is a null that is coming in my code and I'm trying to Derefer that. So I'm trying to use that null value somewhere within my code. That is what this error is saying. So let's understand how to fix it. In order for us to fix it, what we need to know, we need to have a debug logs. If you have not set up the debug logs, you need to do it so that way you would understand the line number and everything. So I'll just save this record once more to get the debug logs. So if you see, this is the error, which is on coming on line number 11 on this trigger, on the class, it is coming on line number 18. This is nothing but your stack trace. So if you want to understand this stack trace, you can also go to your debug log and open the latest error that you see. And if you scroll down to the end, that is where you will be presented with the stack trace. So this is the stack trace of your error. So it has actually started on line number 86. It has been called in this method called before insert. And this before insert method has been called from this trigger. And this is where your actual error is. So from this is your origin and this is the stack trace on top of it, right? So that is how you would read your error. Now let's go to this line number 86 on this class and that too in this method, let's see what is there. So this is the latest code that we have written. Let's go to line number 86, which is somewhere here. So here is where our code is failing. So if you see here, it is failing on this line number 86. That means somewhere this line is causing that null pointer exception. Now let's compare with something that we know. Earlier this piece of code has not thrown any error. That means till this point, everything is fine. So that means this is the place where it is actually giving us that null pointer. So this is something that you would need to have some kind of a guesswork or you can, what you can do, you can basically take this piece of code, go to your anonymous window, give it a try, and then you would be able to understand it. Either commenting out the latest lines or looking at the latest changes, comparing with the old changes, you would be able to figure out which part of that line is causing the error is something that you can do with a trial and error method. What you can do, you can only put this piece and test it. And once that is passing, then put this other piece and then you can check if that is failing. If yes, then you need to focus on that. 
since I know that this piece is already been covered here, this would not be causing an issue. That means this line of code or this section of code is somewhere causing an error. So let's understand the scenario to better understand why this piece is failing. So whenever I created a new record without a subject, so if there is no subject, ideally this field would be set to null. So what I'm trying to do here for a value that is set to null in the scenario two, subject is not set. In scenario one, subject was set. That is why we are not seeing any error. In the scenario two, when the subject was not set, this value is set to null. For a null value, what we are asking, we are asking the substring of null and we are comparing with something that is, then we are comparing that null value subset with a high value using our method called equals ignore case. So since null would not give me any results, that is why the error is saying that attempt to dereference a null object is what the error is saying. So we are trying to play with the null value, expecting that we are getting a value based on the code that we have written, right? So this is a typical scenario. Whenever that value is not set, if you are trying to access something from it, that is where you will get this attempt to dereference a null pointer exception, right? Now what to do? Now we have identified which piece of code is causing an error. The fix to it is before you go and access this value, add one more check. That is nothing but your null check. How does your null check would look like? I would ask the system before you do all this processing of subset and comparing it, check if the subject value is not equals null, then only proceed with this other value. If the subject is null, this value would be set to false. So once it is set to false, this condition would not be executed and I'll not see a null pointer exception or attempt to dereference a null pointer exception. Right. So I've added this check, right? So this check is nothing but check. If the subject is not null, if that is the case, if the subject is populated, then go out and check for these values. So that is why I've appended with an and large cooperation here. So once done, I'll save it. Let's test the same scenario where I do not populate the subject but I'll still click on save. So let's see what would happen. If I click on save, this time I do not see any error. My save case was successfully saved. The reason for that is simple null check that we have added in our condition. So if you see this debug log now, we do not see any error, but this says success. The reason for that is the condition has came here. It has checked for electrical, which is true. This line of code is set to true because we are setting the case type as electrical. And this piece of code true and false in an AND operator would give false. So since the condition is false, this condition would not be executed. So this entire if is been skipped and it would execute the next lines of code that is there. So that is how avoid your attempt to dereference null pointer exception. So whenever you get this error, do not panic. Check on which line we are getting this error. Once I identify that line, check for possibilities of a value being a null. If there is a possibility of any value being null, put a null check. That way you would avoid this error. Hey guys, if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe to SFTC Quest.